Um, my name is Sally Ann Hart and I'm going to talk to you about the Protective Behaviours Process which is a process of empowerment and uh, aims to enhance relationships. Um, I also want to show you these little PB buddies. A good friend of mine made these times when she's feeling a little bit unsettled. She'd sit down and make a, a PB buddy um, to remind us that in the Protective Behaviours Process there are two themes, the two buttons on the head remind us of those and they are that we all have the right to feel safe all the time and that we can talk with someone about anything even if it feels awful or small. Um, protective behaviours is a, is a process, it's a way of doing something and the way we do it is by using seven tools, so hence there are seven buttons in the middle of the body. Um, the very first strategy is theme reinforcement, what is it I can do to reinforce these two themes? How can I demonstrate that my setting is a place where people feel safe and that they can talk? Um, I talk about it as the scratch and sniff approach, if I walk into a setting how does it feel and do I feel safe enough to actually stay there? Uh, the second button in uh, the protective behaviour strategy, the seventh tool in the toolbox, is about one step removed. Sometimes it doesn't feel safe enough to say how I'm feeling or what I'm thinking or to take responsibility for my behaviour. So I might say, what if? Or I have a friend? Or how do you think, how do you think our PB buddy character is feeling? So we can practice things ahead of time and it helps us hopefully feel safer because it gives us an element of control. Uh, the third strategy in the PB Toolbox is called Network Review. Who are those people I can talk with about absolutely anything, even if it feels awful or small. And in Protective Behaviours, we would encourage people to have five network people and have different networks. So the little PB Buddy has got four networks here. One might be their family and friends network, one might be their professional network, mine might be, I don't know, hobbies or a club network and who knows what other network might be. Some people have a religious network or a belief network or, yeah. Um, the fourth tool in the PB Toolbox is persistence, That, and I think she definitely persists when she makes these. Sticking at something, stickability, that's a bit like resilience in protective behaviours. By resilience we don't mean stiff upper lip, we don't mean keep calm and carry on, we mean feeling safe enough to ask for help um, for what you need, so we persist at things. That's why babies are really good at protective behaviours, because they persist. The fifth strategy is called protective interruption, and that's about knowing when it's time to say enough now, finished, stop. Um, my favourite uh, version of that at the moment is a small child I know who now says I'd rather not as his protective interruption. Um, the sixth strategy is called risking on purpose because life is about adventures um, to feel the fear and choose to do it because you want the outcome. And the final button, and I really like the one here that's a big one, it's what sticks it all together, it's called the language of safety and it's about my communication. Am I communicating with people where I'm using quality interactions, is there shared meaning in what I'm saying? Um, do my body language, does that match what I'm saying? And I'm hoping mine does now, because I feel very passionate about protective behaviours. And uh, the final shift, do I feel safe enough to own it? Own my feelings, who am I, I'm me. Sometimes I feel this, this is what I'm thinking, and what are my choices? In protective behaviours we say that we can make uh, decisions for ourselves, but we don't need to make them by ourselves. So that's our little PB people, a person. Um, we have a website called PB People, which is a free community website. Um, people can find all sorts of resources on there to help them feel empowered. Fantastic.